Fibers and Floss Canada. Hi, Samantha here, the Huga Stitcher. We're coming back to you here. We're in, I guess we're starting month number three, right? We're done yep. February, March, and now April the 10th. Um, yep. Yeah, so we just want to touch base regarding our stitch long, hashtag Year of the Dragon Cell. And we wanted to make sure everyone is still stitching and share some progress so that people have shared on Instagram and see how you're doing. Yes. Um, yeah. Sam, did you want to start? Yeah, well, I'm just excited to be back again um, filming with you, Erica. This is a really special thing for the two of us to do together, but also to keep the stitch along alive and going. I know last month when we posted our video, I started to see more people jumping on Instagram again. Mm -hmm. New starts. And I saw um, people making progress. So that's really exciting, right? They get to enjoy yeah. the video and stitch with us and then share their progress again. So this has been really, really rewarding and fun. Um, a lot of people commented on our last video how much they enjoyed the, the chit chat that we had going on throughout the video and sharing each other's progress. So that's really cool. I'm really it's excited nice. about this whole thing. Yeah, I hope we can continue on like all year. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> it'll it'll be good. And yeah. I think we should encourage people to post every month too, because I know with the things that we're sharing, you know, I'm, I'm only looking back to the last month, which is getting mm. really challenging because since Instagram changed to how, yeah. you know, you can view their hashtags, of course, I'm sifting through hundreds of photos going, is this a new one? Is this not a new one? Um, <laughs> so I, I did want to mention that if you are, you know, you're still stitching, um, please do share it, use the hashtag, but also to tag Samantha and I, um, because mm -hmm. then it alerts us to, you know, your progress that you're doing. I, I do make a point of every couple of weeks going through the end entire hashtag and I can still do that at this point yeah. but you know as we move on throughout the year I think that will get harder to do and harder to do um I think it's really cool that we're sharing you know people's progress in the last month um mm -hmm. but it's just impossible to sift through the way yeah. that we used to so it's and if you have joined and we haven't talked about you and shared your progress like post again tag us again um, and we'll like we'll try to get through everybody right like yeah. we're always looking for new and new patterns and as we go through I know I picked people that were it's like sort of a variety of different types of patterns not all the same design yeah right you did right. too yeah so um shall I start off with the first one that I yeah absolutely. yeah okay so um I found Loretta she's actually a stitcher here in Winnipeg Manitoba and we have like a Facebook group page uh, from the Manitoba like stitchers and she had posted her progress on the year of the dragon that she was just starting so we'll insert a picture this is called the vintage book and dragon it's by laser arts design on Etsy and it's really cute it's like very small start but she's she just joined and her purpose of picking this design was actually she's trying to increase the amount of books she's going to read this year. You know, a lot of people have that goal. We're like, I want to read more than I did last year. And yeah. so she's doing the Year of the Dragon and she's going to, it's got the stack of books there. I thought it was really cute. That's a really cute pattern. It's Fun. a cute one for sure. I did yeah. notice that one this week as well. So that's really yeah. cool. But yeah. Okay. Um, the first one I wanted to share was by uh I wrote it down, Katrina Taylor 2019 on Instagram, and she's stitching Story Keep, Once Upon a Time by Amy Stewart, and it's a heaven and earth design. Um, and I'll put pictures in while we're talking. It's actually, it's a really cool design. So she had started it, and she was about a thousand stitches in and realized, oh my gosh, I've grabbed the wrong piece of fabric. And what? so this pattern's actually quite a long pattern. And so mm -hmm. now she's cut off the bottom of the pattern and she's doing essentially the top half. So she's getting the unicorn in there, the dragon in there, the top of the turret. Um, but the bottom part of that uh, piece of castle, she won't be able to stitch. Um, which is, I mean, that's okay. It's an amazing piece. Yeah. I've actually, um, I'll put a picture here as well of the overall, like the big major full piece, Once Upon a Time by Amy Stewart. And we have this puzzle. It's like a 2000 Ravensburger piece puzzle. So good. Um, or maybe that one's not, maybe it's 1500, but I love it. And every time we pull out one of the Amy Stewart puzzles, I'm always like, I need a heaven and earth. I, I need one so bad, but you know, I don't know what I would do with they're so big and what would you 
I don't yeah. know what you would do with it after. So I'm looking at maybe doing one of the minis and I think that's what this is here. It's just a smaller section of that entire piece. So you're just stitching a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, I think it's really cool. The colors are amazing. It's just like the puzzle. And cool. uh, yeah, I think it's definitely very, very, very neat one. I love the colors of the dragon and yeah. the fire and everything, right? So Absolutely. Yeah. I know, Erica, one day we're going to have to just bite the bullet and get a mini and just try I, I I feel like it's a type of stitching we don't know how to do yet like yeah like you know because there's different ways you can stitch a, a heaven and earth design and like there's a whole like you can get gridded fabric not get all different types of sizes like it's a world we don't know yet right <laughs> we need to try it out mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but there was I've somebody been... who um came across my insta oh sorry there's someone that came across my Instagram and they're doing a heaven and earth design. And their plan is every day or every week, I can't remember who it was, but um, they're doing an entire row across the top of the piece. Oh. Which seemed crazy. And maybe, maybe it's not because I've never stitched one. Yeah. But, you know, she has her every 10 marks on her gridded fabric. Yeah. She has all her threads hanging and she braids it together. But then she's just doing one stitch, like so she's just going to have to rethread 10 times for every block or maybe just slightly less yeah. across the entire length of the pattern. Wow. And I feel like you would kind of just, you know, work down your little 10 by 10 block with your color, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I was just I, like that. I think I would like to try the, I think it's called the typewriter method. And this is oh, yeah. the way that you and I kind of stitch already. Like you grab a color, you go with the top and you fill in the spaces all the way down, right? Until your thread's done. And then yes. you go back up to the top and you find another color and you work through. I think that's what typewriter, I don't see what I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no, see, isn't typewriter across and back? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like how we do our mirrors, how you go across the line and back and then the next line. Oh, maybe, maybe. You know what, we're gonna have to look. I at know, it. like that's why I feel like we don't know this world and we're we need idiots. to try it. Yeah, exactly. But like I would, but that's just it. Like we, you and I talk a lot about this, about how we want to try new things. And like the Teresa Wenslers, they're a challenge for our brains. Like, cause we just don't know, like, you know, it's a new yeah. challenge. And I feel like a heaven and earth designs or a full coverage piece would be a new challenge for us to try. I don't want to go too big. Well, like I want to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, there's a couple, sense. there's a couple really good ones out there with Amy Stewart where I just yeah. love the rainbow colors, you know, Me too. and there is this one, um, I can't think of her name, but I'll insert it where she's doing, she's a floss tuber and she's doing the one, it's like the cozy reading nook and oh. it has like all the books and then a little window seat and it's looking outside and you see like the Aurora Borealis and it's so just, cool. oh, I want to do that I want one. It so bad. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, for real. Anyways, no. what's your next one you have? Okay, so let's move on. So my next one is Wendy. She's been stitching um, the Year of the Dragon Cell since the beginning. She found a pattern. It's called Dragon Heart by Black Swan. Right? We've shared this on Instagram before. And so her plan is she's stitching um, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. She calls them her Dragon Days. <laughs> and she's been stitching on her Year of the Dragon Cell. And she's made some really great progress on hers. Mm -hmm. We'll insert a photo of where she's at now. And I like again an inspiring stitcher I love it when people start their projects and then they can you know they continue on and they post their their progress you're like oh wow look at where they are now right like what I wish Wendy had a floss tube because I would watch it <laughs> she has yes. great, she has great projects and I've mentioned this before whenever I find an Instagrammer who shares like like really great progress great photos that sort of thing keeps you engaged I'm always in the background wishing like oh I wish this person had a floss tube because, you know, you don't see their faces, um, you don't hear their voice, you you know, you don't really know the person behind the Instagram photos. Mm -hmm, so just mm -hmm. a, one of those things. I wish Wendy, Wendy had one. But um, another thing I wanted to share about Wendy and her project. So she said that her daughter found a Teresa Wensler fantasy sampler all stitched up. Like, I'm not sure if it was like at a secondhand shop or wherever, but she found one fully stitched and purchased it for her mom. And when Wendy uh, received it, she was like, okay, you know, frame's a little outdated, that sort of thing. She took it all apart. And um, her goal is to, like, give it a good wash, 
give it a good, like let it dry, do a stretch, do the pinning um, and reframe it, give it new life again, which is so cool. Um, you know, that's one of those patterns that I, I would like to stitch one day. This, mm -hmm. The fantasy sampler is really awesome. Um, but, you know, I just think that's really special when people rescue pieces that have been um you know they're not they're not loved anymore and for somebody like us who are like we're collecting Teresa Wenslers and getting into that world and yeah. uh, if you know to find something like that what a treasure and to bring new life back into it it's really awesome so yeah. congratulations Wendy on that find and wasn't it her too that she flipped over and had a picture of the back of it yeah was that her was like <laughs> the back is yeah. crazy and yeah. I thought I, I can relate to that, right? Like when you, you know, I, I keep my, my backs fairly neat, um, but my Wensler is making me crazy. Every time I flip it over, which is all the time because yeah. you're changing threads so often, I was like, oh, there's just so many ends, right? And there's there's no way you could do like a pin start or, and with the blended um, threads, you can't do a loop start. No, um, yeah. So you just, you have all of these things in the back and it very much is a little bit of confetti stitching with all the blends, right? So true. the yeah. back is a little intense actually. And so <laughs> I laughed when she shared that comment. I thought, well, you know, I'd love to see someone do a Wensler that has a perfect perfect back because yeah, right. <laughs> it's impossible yeah <laughs> there's such a crazy piece right but yeah. if you guys wanted to follow Wendy and you should because she's got so many great projects I'll put her name up on the screen here for you guys but it's mangus underscore attic I think yes that's M A M G U S underscore yeah. attic. And because she has cool stuff she's posting all the time. Definitely highly recommend following. Yeah, her. go follow her. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next one I wanted to share is a post by red dot panda dot homebody and she's stitching um the dragons a field guide sal and this is designed by climbing goats design and they're on etsy and instagram um this is a really cool stitch along they made for year of the dragon and so on the 10th of every month they're releasing a new dragon stitch and i don't think there's 12 months i looked at the schedule this year or today, and I think this year only goes to September the 10th. So there'll be nine dragons, maybe 10 dragons actually, because I think they started their number one release had a dragon, but it's really cool. So they're onto their third dragon right now. Um, today they're releasing their fourth dragon. So I'll insert some photos here. Um, now with the field guide, they've done three dragons. So they've done the Wyvern dragon, the Welsh dragon, and the Japanese dragon. But the reason why I'm sharing this photo is that she's done, um, Red Panda has done the Patchwork dragon. And I'm confused because the Patchwork dr Welsh dragon is actually not what the pattern calls for. So there is a Welsh dragon pattern yes. in the pattern, and I'll show comparing photos here for you guys. So the actual dragon is identical, but one is all in reds and the other one is done with patchwork. And so I, I kind of tried to figure it out a little bit, and it looks like the patchwork Welsh dragon is made by... Um, it's called Arts and Stuff on Etsy, or at Michael... Michael A. Lerner on Instagram underscore art. So I'll put both of those things up there. And I'm, like I said, I'm not sure because I don't have the pattern if maybe they've offered different stitches for the dragon or not. I don't know. Um, but it's really, really neat. So the patchwork is what kind of caught my eye. Something a little bit different, right? So yeah. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. All right. Um, next one I have here is Pat. Um, she, her, um, Instagram handle, it's really cute, Pat Patton Tackleberry on Instagram. Now I found her cause she tagged us in her post. She just like started a new Instagram and her dragon is the very first post on, on here. So that's kind of special. I think she, you know, signed up for Instagram so that she could, um, share her progress and join the stitch along with us. So hi, Pat. Um, she is stitching what's called the Pretty Dragon um, by Stitches So Beautiful. And it is a full coverage piece. It's her very first full coverage piece. 
and um, you'll see that it, you know it's got a it's basically a very colorful dragon but you know the background is all like navy blues and and dark you know black and things like that right so she hasn't gotten to the color yet but she's made excellent progress so far on a full mm -hmm. coverage piece since we started the stitch along so that's awesome and I thought it was kind of neat to share her photo too because it's another full coverage dragon but different than some of the others that we've seen isn't that yeah. awesome yeah and it's amazing she's kept up steam when she's stitching just all that dark yeah right like, you know right. Me, I'm, a, I'm a color person and and yeah. it is literally that dark triangle like there's no Shapes no bright or purples or pinks yeah. or anything like that in there yet. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet she's still getting to the colors. Gonna, when it, she gets to those colors, they're just going to pop like crazy. Yeah. yeah it's going to be fly fun. through them. So I'm excited to see her progress throughout the year too. So hopefully she yeah. gets to some of those colors. <laughs> Very yes. cool. Um, so the next one I have here to share is by Find Your Stitches on Instagram. Um, she's shared The Castle by Teresa Wensler. We share a lot of Teresa Wensler's, yeah. I think, but she's, um, you know, she's kind of the queen of dragons, right? Yeah. I don't know if she'd like to be called that now, but um, <laughs> we definitely, you know, you think about a good, classic, amazing dragon stitch, Teresa Wensler always comes up. She's just, she's mm -hmm. so gifted with her colors and her blends and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so this one here was really cool. So she actually stitched this piece 25 years ago. She stitched it, she framed it, she had it in her house, and then she moved and she kind of just tucked it away. Um, mm -hmm. Then she saw us start our stitch along and reminded her of the pat or the finished uh, stitch that she has. Yeah. And so she pulled it out and decided, I guess she never did the blending filament in the Krennic. I don't Ooh. know why, but didn't do it originally. So she's pulled it out of the frame. Oh my she's gosh. ordered the blending filament and the Krennic and she's putting it into the design now. Wow. And That's so amazing. here's a second picture where you can see all the extra shine starting to come to life. She's just doing the dragon that's coming around the top of the castle. And I think it's so cool that she yeah. finished it, but now is re, I guess, re-stitching part of it just yeah. to add new life to it. So super cool to see that. Um, and then also somebody else sent me a message on Instagram and I tried to sift through all my messages to figure out who it was this morning and I, I can't find it now. But Aww. she said, did you see this? It's an article that Krynik is closing the owner is retiring yes uh, that was actually yeah. one of the things I was going to talk to you about today oh, um, Doug, cool. yeah Doug Krynik he um, is a family owned business it's been it was open for 51 years and he's he uh, retired after 41 years with the company yeah. Um, which is crazy. Like for all of us Krynik lovers, and I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I love sparkle. I love using them in my patterns. If it has Krynik's and beads, I'm, I'm in. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? And um, what's really exciting um, about this is he sold the business to Rainbow Gallery, mm -hmm. which is based out of California. And I actually brought out a little bit of Rainbow Gallery. I mean, this is Whisper, but these are the cards that they come on. And I'm wondering, and I'm kind no. of hoping, Erica, think? I, th I think it would be amazing because the spools of Krynik are so, like, if you're a shop owner and you sell Krynik, as soon as you put a spool of Krynik in an order, it's now a parcel. This isn't going letter mail. Like, there's no way around it, right? That's and true. They're, they're really expensive to ship. And um, they're also hard to, like store like we put them in our little spool containers and things like yeah. that you know there's just a it's just a challenging whereas like if you have a store and you have a hook like there goes all the colors like nice on the shelf on yeah, the, on the like wall the, I like the spool I do I, I like, like the this, card I like the card and they could they could change like Krynik you know made yeah. by Rainbow Gallery or something yeah. I'm hoping that a big change comes because I think these would make shipping much cheaper um and just more like you know you could fit it in a package i like the way that it looks but but for us as stitchers yeah how my whisper i just keep in floss away bags because it's a weird shape e really yeah, yeah I like guess you, you can can't stand it up in a like a folder or because the bottom is curved yeah like how do you, where how do you store your whisper well, I just put it in the project bag. Like, I mean, this yeah. by itself, it's just my drawer because I don't have a spot. But I think I could find something that if I had a lot of 
Krynik or whatever, you know, sparkly, because Treasure, Treasure Braid is made by Rainbow, Rainbow Gallery. I'm saying all the words too fast. And um, they they put their sparkly floss on, on these cards. So, yeah, I guess it would just be like if you would right. have like a peg board and mm. you could store your Krynik there or your, your Treasure Braid or have like a fun little plastic container that you could stand them all up in would be kind of fun too. But when you're using yep. it in a project, like in the project bag, this would fit better than than the spools, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I, I was thinking about that over the last couple of days. I'm like, ooh, I wonder if they're going to make a change because uh, maybe not right away because I bet you if they bought the business, they bought the the machinery because that's all getting shipped over to, um, to Rainbow Gallery eventually. And... Um, you know, I bet you they bought all the all the spools and all the things. Like maybe throughout the years, it might if you don't reorder more or something. Who knows? But I thought about yeah. that because this has been a problem. Um, you know how to store these and where to put them and all of that and shipping and and that sort of thing. So, right. I don't know. And but... it, it's neat because they said that they're going to invest more in production as well. Mm -hmm. So they're hoping to get the delivery time. Um, to reduce that to the stores and stuff so that they can get stock and supply. Yeah, exactly. Order. So that um, could be interesting. But they've closed. The yeah, they've closed so their doors. April April the 8th, they closed their doors. But they wow. said six weeks. Six weeks will be their opening time for Rainbow Gallery California to, wow. to be outsourcing and, and shipping out Krynik. So no one needs to panic. It's only no, six weeks, no, right? No you know, panic. We won't even notice, I don't think, as a consumer. Probably right? not. Um, yeah. And I, I just think it's like some people are saying like, oh, it's sad, you know, because Doug Krynik has been a part of the community for so long, right? And people have met him at, like shop owners have met him at market and like he's just a big part of the of the community, right? So like mm -hmm. congratulations to him for retiring. Oh, like, yeah, that's, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, but also that it's not going away. You know, he's found a way to like sell his business to someone else and who already is like um you know producing and making threads and things like that so yeah I don't well know yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so yeah. it's good it's, it's super good. exciting I want to congratulate him on his retirement because that's yeah. so amazing just to awesome. you know finally hit that stage in life but like you said being able to sell it on to a company that's going to continue that yeah so we don't have to try that's and enforce huge. you know the stuff that's not made anymore, which is yeah, because that would be that. like, <laughs> oh, could you imagine? Like, I mean, every no. single Mirabilia pretty much has Krynik yeah. in it. Could you imagine? Yeah, like, what am I gonna do? Oh. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a disaster. <laughs> yeah, a disaster. It'd be like panic mayhem. Like everybody buy up everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, but no, that's uh, nothing to worry about there. But I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, because that was one of the things that I wanted to share share with you if you hadn't heard that yet. But I'm sure mm -hmm. it's starting to trickle around through the community. Like, hey, did you hear? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Very cool. So I uh, want me to go on um, to yeah. the next one. Okay. So I found Claudia on Instagram. Uh, her handle is Claudia underscore petals underscore and underscore wings really fun she's doing a Teresa Wensler too so she mm -hmm. has started with us the guardian by Teresa Wensler and I am in awe of how much progress she has made on her Teresa Wensler already and this is a really fun pattern um one that I don't have in my collection yet and I love this dragon because it is it is the like all dragon a little bit of castle in the background, you know, like it is like yeah. the, the most amazing dragon. Um, and I wanted to point out, look at her stitching, like all of those quarter stitches to show the background. Like you see the dragon, but then you can see the background stitches where it's like in a distance. And these are yeah. one of the things that I love about Teresa Wensler. And I haven't had, I haven't done this yet in my pattern yet, but I'm looking forward to it is to get that to get that dimension in the stitch where it's like you can see up front and then in the distance. And so I, I, that, I, I saw that and was like, how cool. And um, Claudia, way to go on all of the um, work that you put into your stitch so far because that's impressive. Mm -hmm. And Teresa Wensler, no joke. <laughs> No yeah, she's done a lot of work on that. It's looking yeah. really, really good. Hours and hours. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> For sure. 
<laughs> okay, the next one I have to share with you guys is Andrew, the runner stitcher. Um, yes. So he has been stitching another stitch along actually for this year for Year of the Dragon. So this is Pixel Dragon, Pixel Dragon Adventure Style, and it's by at Flossy Fox Shop. And so that's the name for Instagram and for Etsy. Um, this is a six part stitch long and they're on part number five right now. It is so cool. There's quite a few people actually stitching this one besides him. Um, but I've, sh I've chosen to share his because I was watching one of his recent floss tubes and um, which are fun by the way. So if you don't watch his, go give him a go because yes. he's awesome. Um, yes. He is doing teeny tiny little stitches on this and it is beautiful so the fabric that he's using um he shared some details so he's using a 28 count green apple even weave and it's by dove stitch using called for dmc but i think he's doing one over one and it's just awesome and so he said you know in his recent post it's hard to kind of really capture um in the pictures but if you go watch his floss tube it's amazing it looks so very good um yeah, so I definitely, I think the colors are cool. I think the pattern's really neat. The pattern is about, I want to say twice the size. He's probably, I'd say he's maybe on part three out of five, out of six. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But it looks about, he's half done. But very, very cool for sure. Yes. Um, and check out the floss tube because it's definitely worth it. It shows, you know, it's hard yeah. to take pictures of some of our stuff, right? Yeah. It doesn't show up as well, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and he stitches Mirabilius too, right? Yeah, I believe he he's had a few of them, so that's really cool. I I love, um, you know, meeting new people in the floss tube community. But I think it's something mm -hmm. special to see when you see a male stitcher. It's like, hey, wait, who's that? I want to know more about what you know what they like to stitch, and um, you know, full coverage pieces, and then the dragon and the Mirabilia. It's like, wow, yeah, really, really cool, great variety in his stitching. So definitely go check out his channel and subscribe and go meet him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got some fun stuff on there. Yeah, sure. yeah, good. Okay, okay. Um, on to Kim. She, um, on Instagram, her handle is KKIER53. All right. And she is doing a really cool dragon pattern. It is called um, Dragon Sampler Monochrome Cross Stitch Pattern by Daily Pattern Post. I believe that's on Etsy. Right, Erica? I think yeah, you looked into that on Etsy. And um, she's got a really fun um, color, because she's doing all one color, by Color and Cotton Floss called Sarah Grasso C. I think it's really, really beautiful. And in her photo on Instagram, she's got a really cool um, dragon scissor fob that she's, you know, placed on top of her stitching. And I was like, oh, this girl's got it going on. She's Kim's got like all the fun things. And she also had decided that she needed a dragon bag to put her stitching in. And so we'll insert a photo of her dragon bag that she, um, I'm not sure if she sewed it. It made it sound like she was gonna make one, but then, also, it looked a lot like the dr dragon material that I have from uh, my stitch that I got from um, Sarah, Memphis Sarah E had sent to me from her sister-in-law. So I wonder, is like, did did her sister, did Sarah's sister-in-law make that bag from Rivertown Designs or did Kim make it? Um, I'm really curious to know. I'm going to ask her. Um, but it got me thinking, Erica, you were going to make some bags, right? I was. And then we had spring break yes. in BC. Our spring break is two weeks long, you guys, yeah. which was followed by Easter break. Mm -hmm. So we had spring break was just shy of three weeks this year. And for the month of March, I didn't get anything done. Yeah, I get <laughs> I it. I tried. But, you know, we had all of our kids were home. We had a little getaway in there. And, you know, best laid plans all kind of went out the window. And I haven't filmed a floss tube in about a month. <laughs> Me neither. Um, no sewing's <laughs> happened. Very little yeah. stitching. So, yeah, we definitely, I will be making some bags. I do have some fabric we shared last time. Yeah. And we want to do some giveaways with them for you guys. So, so definitely, exciting. definitely watch on the next one. I will have some sewn for sure yeah. next month. So, yeah. I know. The, those times off, like with the kids that are home and things like that, it's hard to um, find the time to, to even film or stitch. And yep. to even film, right? And I wanted to mention that um, Erica and I have been sort of 
taking turns like we'll film a video together like this and then uh, last month it was posted on my channel and this month it's posted on your channel and we'll mm -hmm. kind of go back and forth so that you can find our videos on each other's channels um, mm -hmm. but we're also still going to continue to film our regular floss tubes too because a lot of comments came in said they loved the joint video between the two of us together but they also mm -hmm. love our individual uh, floss tubes as well right so they're like don't stop doing that like <laughs> yeah and yeah totally I totally agree like we have fun um, I you know we're going to talk about our dragons soon about our stitching that we are, we have done but you know again I'm going to film probably in the next like week or so um, a regular floss tube because I'm overdue because mm -hmm. of spring break right and the Easter and all of the things but yeah. I'm excited to come back um, yeah so I just wanted to mention that, that we're going to take turns on each other's channels. Yeah, yeah, and we'll absolutely. Be back. Yeah. For sure. All right. So do you want to share your, um, did you have another one or? I, yeah, I actually oh. have two more. Yes. Okay. So okay, my next one here is a bit of like childhood nostalgia for me. I look mm. at this one and I just. I don't know there's something about it. it reminds me of all the storybooks I read as a child so this one is shared by flightless underscore stitcher on insta um she is stitching dragon with embroidery and it's by Nedzada Kazarina oof mm -hmm. I I'll put the name because yes. you know me phonetic <laughs> pronunciation right um and she's stitching this on a 36 count uh linen there's no particular color name for it but it was by at Fortnite fabrics and she's doing two over two now this one has a little dragon and he you know they're stitching in their big red comfy stitchy spot and the big lantern that comes yes. over and i think it's the the nature of the lap maybe with the you know the leaves and it just I, I don't know, childhood nostalgia right yep. there for me. Is, Agreed. It's amazing. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of come back around and close the loop on was last time I talked about this book that I read as a child oh, that yes. had dragons in it. Yeah. And Did you find it? I found it. Yeah. Cool. You guys, this book's from 1982 from the UK. Wow. And it's so loved. Look at the spine. My dad is a hockey, he plays tons of hockey, and this is <laughs> hockey tape. And so I've always thought, my sister and I, we loved reading this when we were little, that I should take it in and have it rebound properly. Um, yeah, I mean, the hockey tape has held up for yeah. you know, 40 years, but, you know. That's so amazing. In this book, yeah. they have so many dragons. It's very, like, classic um, childhood stories where... I don't even know how to describe them. There's no, there's not necessarily a point to the story. You're not coming, you know, you're not finishing with some sort of takeaway. It is pure, like, imagination, great stories. But here are some of the dragons I thought I'd share. So here's one of the dragons in this book. There's two there. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. And then, um... I've flagged three pages for you guys. Look at this dragon. <laughs> I love it. As I'm showing you, this whole book is like leaning forward out of the spine. Oh my goodness. I need to just have it what redone. What a special book. That's awesome. And don't yeah. we all think of this when we think of a dragon? Yeah. Right? One big dragon with the fire lighting all the candles, doing all the things, right? <laughs> Um, it's, this is such a great book. I've always, um, Gosh. you know, we, we frequent a lot of used bookstores mm -hmm. and this is one of the books I'm always kind of keeping my eyes peeled for. You've and, um, as a child, my Nana used to read a child craft encyclopedia. Um, one of them was just about the, the stories for the kids. And yes. there was a story about a boy who would go under his bed and touch a nail and he would shrink down and then he would go down in the wall of his house. And there was, I can't remember, it's not the Littles, but it, yes, it's a story kind of similar to the Littles where there was like a nice cozy, you know, fire and quilt and armchair. And he'd go down there and have a little visit with whatever creature lived in there. Yes. And to this date... I cannot find this child craft. I remember exactly what it looked like. You know, we go to the used oh, bookstores and they have the, you know, 30 books. Um, but I can't remember the name of the story. And I know it was in the early 70s was the edition. So, you know, mm. 
Yeah. So you, not that I need it, but I just, for some reason, that's you that wanna childhood. You want to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So and you just sparked, like, I used to watch the Littles as yeah, a kid. they were great. Oh, my gosh. They love it. You know, behind the wall, and they'd have this whole, like, house back there, and bedrooms, and kitchen, and all the things. And, yeah. Oh, gosh. Sleeping in the match boxes. And yeah. They'd have the little, um, like, the pulleys for moving up and down in up the and wall, down. like the little elevators, you know? I love that movie. Yeah, show. the little so thimbles. Good. and Yeah, so yeah, adorable. They were good. Isn't that funny? We both like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. All okay, right, when, you have one, you have one, one more? more? Yeah, go ahead. I'm done. Oh, you're done. Okay, so yeah. I have one more then. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this one here is by Official Mermaid Cove, and she's stitching um, Dracarius from Game of Thrones. It's Mother of cool. Dragons. Um, the artwork is by Dalen Ogden. Uh, handle is Dalen Dal at Dalen Dalen. And the kit is from at Gecko Rogue. And so I'm not wow. sure, um, I didn't have time to actually pull those up and look at it myself, mm -hmm. but what's caught my eye here is this background fabric she uses for the picture for some reason. I don't, initially I thought, oh, what amazing fabric she's stitching it on. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is full coverage. She's not stitching it on that. She's stitching it on white, but that's in the background. And it kind of wow. got me thinking with some of these full coverage pieces, um, when you look at her picture, there's kind of that archway and it's circular and there's, um, I don't know if it's stained glass work in the background, but there is some pink in behind uh, Dracarius's head. And I wonder, you know, she very well could have stitched it on this amazing pink fabric and let that pink shine through instead of mm -hmm. doing those stitches there would be yeah. kind of a neat approach with um a, something a different coverage yeah but yeah it's definitely it's beautiful so she's yeah. stitching 28 count um two over one and the whole thing is in a tenth stitch so mm -hmm. it looks really good she's made great progress she's about 30 percent done um yeah and then so i i was on her profile and I was like oh you guys she has some stuff that I've seen before that she has shared oh, wow. and there is um there's this puzzle my mom did and I can't remember the name now shoot I should have got the name I'll put it in here and I'll put a picture for you guys this is the great thing about filming and editing yeah. right but there <laughs> is this picture of the girl wearing a dress and um the full dress is all these little pieces of blue and gold all the way down and then she has an big angel wings and this is by um lavender and lace is the one that she's stitching <laughs> But my mom did this puzzle, and we're huge puzzlers, and she was just cursing. Like, it, she said it was the oh, most yeah. difficult puzzle to really? do the inside of that dress. And so when she had started stitching this, I was sending, you know, she would post it on Instagram, and I would take a screenshot and send it to my mom and say, look, look at this lady, she's stitching this one that you, <laughs> you know, the puzzle that she just thought was so difficult at that time, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, she has a lot of very cool projects, very, very fun fabrics that she's stitching. Um, definitely go give her a, give her a look a for look. sure. And a yeah. Follow, so. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the other thing I wanted to share was a little picture that, you know, it's funny when you're on Instagram, how it kind of tracks what you're doing and what your likes are and stuff like that. So now all of a sudden I have all this like dragon stuff that shows up on my feed. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. but there is this one picture and this is a real, a, um, a real building in Bangkok. And I thought it'd be really cool to share this. Yeah. So um, there's a, a tall tower and there is a dragon um, like statue that's built around the outside of this building and um, I'll put the proper name of it on the screen I'm not going to try to pronounce it but it's known as Dragon Temple and so you can actually climb up 17 flights through the inside of the dragon so the dragon that goes around the outside of the building is hollow mm -hmm. and you can go all the way up to the very top of the tower in it, which is so cool. So I don't know. It's just That's... something I wanted to share because I thought, how neat is that? Right? And I've Are never you seen sure? it before. Like, it almost doesn't look real. Like, it doesn't look like it's, it looks fake. Like, how is that possible? It's a real building with a real... It, it is. Like... A, yeah. So <laughs> then, you know, I originally seen it and I was like, what? And then what? so I looked, I Googled it and I looked, it's a real thing. 
Wow, that is so, so cool. very, very neat. I'm, I'll never imagine? get to see it in real life, but yeah. it's cool for sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh my gosh. All right. Do you want to well, share your stitching, your progress? Yeah, I was going to show you. Um, I have been making some really great progress on my dragon. So to remind you all, I am stitching the Storyteller by Teresa Wensler. Here it is. And I also like to show the back because you can see the dragon a little more up close. Yeah. Very cool. But remember I was talking about that castle in the background? I want to do that so bad. Yeah. But I'm still a ways away to get to get there. <laughs> But I have been working on still the dragon, so there's a lot of green um, greenery. But last mm. time you saw it, I had completed the top part of this green and then down to the navy blue. And now I started again. So it's a lot of the same similar colors. I start at the top, I find one color, and I do that symbol all the way down. And then I stop and grab another color. So this time I sort of counted as I was going along, like how many different colors are in these greens <laughs> because last time I didn't know and there are 10 different colors mixed in in the stitching that I've done so far of this new green section like 10 Crazy. different blends or 10 yeah. different yeah so 10 different colors. colors some of them are blended some of them are by themselves there's 10 different symbols in there yeah um yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And as you go through it, like I, uh, I, as I was stitching it, like, yeah, it's challenging. I have to have sort of like peace and quiet and to be able to complete those stitches. But when you start going like that and you work at the top and you can work your way down and then grab a new color and do it again, like, and it starts to build the shape, it's like, oh, wow, this is going to be so cool. And it's very, very enjoyable to stitch on. And I'm excited to get into um, the center because if you see it, like there was that little bit of green and a little bit yeah. down here, I'm going to get into these yellows and pinks pretty soon. Look at all that. the confetti in that pink. Yeah, there's oh a lot. Oh my gosh, yeah. you're going to hate it. Probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but it'll be fun to get those colors in. But at the same time, you're right. It is a lot of like one stitch here. But I wanted to do all the leg yeah. work. I wanted to get all of those stitching all the way around it done so that it'll just be like filling in the blanks as you yeah. go down and you'll have markers like, oh, there's that green one. Okay, this one's one stitch over, you know, that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm excited. The one thing I find challenging with Wensler's is that when you are doing that confetti and when you're doing all that red in there, yeah. it's hard to landmark because you know, mm -hmm. it's it's easy when it's different colors, but when it's, okay, three down, two over from that red, which looks so much like, you know, the other 10 reds you're using. Yeah. It's difficult, right? I it found is. that with my peacock and doing the leaves of the tree, I was just like, no one can be home. No one can be talking to me. No. And even then, I am making some mistakes. Yeah. Right? Like, it's definitely... Yeah, Hard. gridded yeah. fabric would be helpful, I think, for that, but yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, and <laughs> another cool. thing I've been doing is I'll stick to that one symbol, and I'll start at the top, and I'll complete the whole symbol all the way down as far yeah. as I can on my page, you know, and then stop. And then now I know, okay, I've done that one. And um, with this one, with the green, because it was a little bit green on this side, I completed the symbol on this side, and then I would come down on here and complete the symbol on that side. So I'm like, okay, that one's done. And then I move on to the next and you just sort of like when you're deciding which color to do, it's like the next one over that goes down, you know, like that's mm -hmm. sort of how I've been, how I've been doing it. And I, it might change when I get into these pinks. I'm not sure, but right. so far that's how I've been stitching it and it's been really fun. Um, yeah. It's looking amazing. Like this dragon's going to be huge. Yeah. It's going to be awesome though. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And um, before you share yours, I wanted to share something with you. Mm -hmm. I was at a guild meeting um, a couple nights ago. We meet on the first Thursday of every month. And um, so it was last week. And so I've been talking a lot about Teresa Wetzler. And I've been, you know, with my table mates and this sort of thing. So um, Charlotte, she's um, a stitcher I've known for a long time. She actually used to work at um, Sheena's back in the day. Okay. Back in the yeah. day, she worked at Sheena's Gallery here in Winnipeg, and then she also worked with Barb um, at Lizzie B's. So that's how I know her, and she's been a Guild member forever. But she sits with us sometimes, and um, she came in on Thursday, and as soon as I sat down, she was like, reached in her bag, and she's like, I got something for you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I already know. I'm like, it's a Teresa Wensler. It's going to be a dragon. Oh my goodness. I just, I just knew it, right? Because, you know, Teresa Wensler has had patterns out for 
like decades, decades. <laughs> and people have her patterns like stashed away in their collections that, you know, maybe they've stitched already, never gonna stitch, but they collected them at one time. And this is actually a magazine. I'll get to it. <laughs> oh. This is a magazine. Um, what is this called? Stitches. Is that Wars. Dragon Ride? Yeah. Dragon oh, Ride. Nice. And I'm like, I'm dead. I'm like, okay, Dragon Ride. As I look through the pattern, I'll see if I can find. I can't show you the pattern, but I can show you maybe a bit bigger picture. But inside the magazine is all like it's kind of like four or five pages of some of her other designs. What? Not the patterns. Not the patterns, but yeah. I mean, I love those. Um, those fairies right. are so cute. Um, this one I absolutely love. I'm gonna get my hands on this one one day. I believe it's called Ship. Oh, yeah. It's got the alphabet, tall ships, it's called. Yeah, Can someone's stitching that on Facebook right now. Oh, and there's mm -hmm. mermaids on the side. Love it. But yeah, it's got the drag. So it's got a whole write up that I'm going to read that's all about Teresa Wensler. And it's got the dragon ride in it. And as I'm looking at the pattern, I'm like, oh, this one's so much easier than this one. This one's so hard. This one's so yeah. hard. This one looks, I mean, it's still Teresa Wensler, but the pat, like the border, not as difficult. Okay. The dragon itself that has all the colors, like thread list is very similar to this one and it doesn't look as hard to do. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I wish I had that one first. Yeah. But, um, I'm going to stitch that one day for sure. Absolutely. This is going in my collection. It's beautiful. I'm so excited. Like, you know, I'm so spoiled with um, the ladies that I've been stitching with at the guild. They they love, like, they surprise me with things oh, all the time. Last month I had another uh, Teresa Wensler from another table maid um, that was called the Fantasy Sampler. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so spoiled. Very lucky. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but There's I somebody that, that has been stitching Dragon Ride. I'll see if I can find it. But mm -hmm. she she hasn't posted, I don't think, in a while. But she was flying through it. In the I can first see month. why. And she just started at the the left-hand border. And okay. was literally, like, she already did the person riding the dragon. Like, she's done, all, like, it Half was it. unbelievable how much she was stitching. It was crazy. Crazy! But I don't think I've seen her post anything for maybe the last month. So I wonder... I'll see if I can figure different. out who it was, and I wonder yeah. where she's at with her progress. Yeah. yeah, I think hopefully, you know, with us doing this, it helps people to um, feel a bit inspired to pull their pieces out. Yeah, them. that's more. that's the goal. You know, I yeah. with my dragon, I did tuck him away. Um, I haven't worked on him. We did our last filming for the tenth of March. Yeah, and then I didn't work on him at all until this week. Mm -hmm. And I pulled it out and I had a hard time like going to bed last night because I was like, I want to stitch more on this. Yeah. And I was like, do you really want to take it out of the frame to iron it and show it today? But I had to <laughs> so you could see the whole thing and, you know, and just being able to pull it back out and just, you know, breathe some life back into it has been a lot of fun. So I hope yeah. that people find that this inspiring and we'll do the same. So I'm doing um, Celestial Dragon, and I'll put a picture in here because I have somehow misplaced my pattern this week. Um, I do like to photocopy my patterns, and with the Wensler, I've been highlighting them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I photocopied it. You know, it's probably still in the scanner. I haven't looked there. I looked everywhere for it this morning, and I can't find it. <laughs> That's Anyways, totally where it is. This is, this is where I'm at. Oh, Erica. <laughs> So I am, um, it's 25% done. The wow. Stitching. But don't be fooled with the Teresa Wensler. There is, you know, so much back stitching. The entire dragon has a gold overlay. There is couched back stitching throughout the whole thing. There is a, like a gold netting that goes across the background. Um, there's still... I think 1,300 and something beads to go on here. Wow. So my plan is, <laughs> sure, you know, this 25% here is stitched. Stitched, yeah. But there's still a lot more to do. So my yeah. plan is to do 25% of the, like, foundation stitching every two months. So I've done that. This here is the cutoff, and I've started into my next section wow. there. Wow. Um, I'll just zoom in a little bit. So there's some, like, one by one there. Or one over one and then um, there's the dragon 
And so I have with this one, you know, they do say with the Wenslers to do the true quarter stitch. And I've been doing really a, a three quarter stitch instead of the quarter um, because I find that with this one here, it's um, with the red background. If I don't and I do the quarter stitch, too much of the red is showing through. And so I think, you know, if you look with these squares here, squares, the shape, whatever, this lattice work. Um, if it was with the, um, you know, the quarter stitches, and some people have finished it that way, a lot of the red shows through. So I'm happy mm. with that. But there are areas, you know, like in here where I think, oh, it could have been a little bit finer. But I'm just going to leave it all with the three quarters. And I'm stitching it very much the same as you, same approach where, you know, when I'm looking here, I am grabbing a color and working around and grabbing the second one and coming all the way down, right? Mm -hmm. But look at that tail. It's so much That's fun. Amazing. Look at the colors. Oh my gosh. And so I'm like impressed. you could imagine. Yeah. I'll show you guys. You want to see my back? Let me show you the back. <laughs> Just because I'm such a perfectionist, right? But like, yeah. let's celebrate the crazy back. I bet you it still looks pretty good, Erica. Like, my back will look good. Yeah, today? is that what you think? I think it's still gonna be like not that messy. Like, it just carried over thread. See, we're we're two types where we like to like. Oh, if I'm doing green and I'm tying off the end, I'm gonna like feed it through the green thread, right? Like, so that yeah. the green goes, you know, that sort of thing. And that's just comes with our nature. But like, sometimes you got to carry the thread through some like different color. Okay, Absolutely. let's see. Are you let's ready? See. Yeah. Wait, see, oh, yeah. I think that looks great. Like, what are you kidding? Look at that. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. Look at the back of that dragon. Oh, gosh. I think it looks awesome. And so... It's thick though too, not yeah, as thick, thick as my peacock. The peacock has a lot more confetti and is a mm. lot thicker. Like I've noticed framing could be a bit of a challenge almost, you know, because the design is quite a bit thicker there. But yeah, yeah. anyways, really enjoying it. Absolutely Yay. loving it. I will be stitching more of it this week. It's my, my birthday um, on the 16th of April. So in a week and I have a very fun new start for that. So I'll probably <laughs> stitch on this until then. Until then. I'll get away till next month. So yeah, yeah. that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, I'm really proud of you, Erica. Like yours is like really coming along. It's Thank really you. coming together. You can see its face. Like, that's exciting. And the tail. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I love color. I like a really good yeah. color. And um, I think that's what's helping me to, to you know, blow through this one. I pulled out Dutch Beauty a little bit here over spring oh. break. Oh. And I was just like, oh, it's beautiful. I love it. But those mm. with the muted colors, I'm just, I like it. But... It doesn't leave mm -hmm. me like, I have to stitch more of this. Like, oh, I don't want to go to bed. I want to step late and stitch on it. That's yes. not happening. And I think That's the difference happening. is the colorways yeah. between the two, right? But, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Good. Oh, I want to get back to Dutch Beauty. That's one of the samplers that I have. Um, boy, last year I didn't really put that much it, uh, into it. And I'm like, yeah. this year I want to get a lot, of, a lot done. Um, you know, get a page finish or something, you know, it's, yeah. like, it's a beautiful stitch, but I have to I'd be in the right mood, I guess, for the sampler stitching. And hopefully that I'll, you know, I'm trying every month to incorporate a sampler into my stitching too, so that I have right. some of it on the go. But I understand what you mean about seeing the different colors. And when you are stitching on something and you've got that fire, like, oh, don't you put it away. Like you just go, like you just yeah. fly. Yeah. Don't let that feel Cause it's sometimes it's hard to get that feeling, right? Where you're just like, I'm so excited to stitch on this mm -hmm. one and I can't put it down. And like, <laughs> yeah, you ride that train until it's over. <laughs> yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. For I'm sure. so glad we did this, Erica. Um, thank you so yeah. much again for, I know it's a lot of work, you know, the recording and editing. So I really appreciate, um, you doing this. I hope others have enjoyed watching and had, um, maybe they stitched their dragon too. post share mm -hmm. on Instagram, your, um, your progress. We love seeing it. And I think it inspires other people to join us too. And tag us so we can see it us. because it's great that we have so many posts on Instagram under the hashtag, but it's getting harder to find you guys. Yeah. Especially because it organizes by top posts. So 
You know, mm -hmm. those ones that have been around and they have all the likes are at the top. Sorry, you guys, we had some sort of technical difficulties at the end there. So unfortunately it cut off half of our video. It's just me now. I just wanted to wish you a very, very heartfelt thank you for watching this long. Um, Samantha and I definitely both feel uh, very appreciative of everything that you guys are doing, um, how you're participating in the Stitch Long and how you're watching and supporting all the videos and just listening to the chit chat. So um, yes, definitely do post Post, do tag us do use the hashtag we're really looking forward to seeing all of your projects so if you haven't posted lately we're just dying to see what you guys have been up to thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next month bye from me and from Samantha